we're going to tie today is going to be the rusty spinner. This is a, a very popular pattern, one that you're for sure going to want to have in your box. I'm going to tie this up today on a size 16, but quite often I'll do this a lot smaller than a, a size 16. I'm using a rusty, um, a rusty brown thread to go with our rusty spinner theme here. And just get a base layer of some thread on our hook. And I'm going to come on in here with my scissors and cut the butt end off here. And on this fly, I want to retain this, uh, what I just clipped off, because we're going to use it here in just a moment. First material I'm going to tie on, I'm just going to use two micro fibettes. Um, I like using these for the tailing material. I'm kind of just looking at that for length, an initial length anyway. I'm just going to pinch that. I'm going to take a couple of wraps over the top of that material before I completely secure it down because this gives me a chance to not only arrange it but look and see if I've got the tails to the right length. Those are a little bit long so I can just grab on this side of that material and I can just gently pull it and it will shorten those tails a little bit. That's about where I want them. From there, I just want to make sure these stay on top of the hook shank as I move back down towards the bend of the hook. So that's the primary thing I'm going to do is keep hold of these fibats on the end just to make sure I'm keeping those right where I want them on top of the shank of the hook. And I really don't want to go too far around the bend here because what ends up happening is the bend of the hook will force those fibats to curve downward. Um, and that's not what we're going for here. So one thing that I didn't really learn um, for uh, quite some time, or maybe too long, um, is kind of the life cycle. I had some general ideas of the life cycle of, of bugs and insects. Um, but primarily I would know like a, a pupa or a nymph on the bottom, and then I just would say, or a dry fly. Um, but in fact, when the bug is a, a, a nymph or pupa, they're living on the bottom of the of the water, lake, stream, whatever you're you're fishing in, um, and they'll have a life span to a certain extent, and then they will, as they get ready to mature, they're going to float up to the top. They're going to shed the skin that they have. That's when they're emerging, and that's where you'll get the emerger pattern. Um, the wings will come out, and the and the the bug will take off off of the water. That stage is called the done stage. Um, it's going to live in that done stage for a short period of time, not nearly as long as they do on the bottom of the water usually. Um, and that's when they're going to mate, um, drop eggs in the water, etc. And then they go into their dying phase, and that's called the spinner phase. Um, and that's why this is called a spinner, is because this is representing the spinner stage of this particular fly. So. Without too much further ado, um, I'm going to take those fibats and I'm going to kind of work on separating them because I want them separate um, almost 60 to 90 degrees away from one another. And I can do that just by kind of pushing back with my, my fingers up against them and you can probably see how that's turning out a little bit. They, this doesn't need to be perfect at this point, but this is where that tag end of our tying thread comes in handy. So I'm basically gonna just take that tag end, I'm gonna put it right into the gape of the hook, I'm gonna fold it over, and I want that to run right in between those two fibets. And I'm not gonna pull this in incredibly tight yet, and maybe not at all, but I'm gonna secure that thread down that we just, that those doubled over uh, butt ends, tag ends that we had. And once I've got that done, I can actually now take those two and I can give them a little bit of a tug. And what that'll do is it's gonna cause these tails to splay out a little bit. Um, maybe not as much as I just did, but um, you'll, you'll note now uh, by doing it that way, that's gonna keep those splayed out and splayed out about exactly where I want them. I'm going to come back up the, the hook shank here a little bit, and at this point I can go ahead and come on in and we'll cut off the butt ends of both our fibets and our tag ends. 
So now I'm just going to go to a, a turkey quill or buy it. So I've got that right here. I've already uh, taken one of these off. And I'm going to, I like to tie this with the darker side of it uh, pointing down towards the bottom. And just like with the other material, I can tie this, get the first loop or two on the material as well. Um, I need enough length to travel up the hook, but this is brittle as hell, so I don't want it to be all the way to the tip. And then as I'm securing this to the hook here, I'm going to be very deliberate and somewhat gentle um, in securing this biot or this quill in this case it's not the biot it's actually a quill because if I crank really hard um, with my rusty thread here it'll cut right through that um, quill and then it'll break off and then I'll have to untie and retie a, a new one on so you want to be really careful with that material especially with your thread because if you crank clamp it down way too tight with your thread. Your thread, I can guarantee, is going to cut right through that quill. i um, going to take a look at body proportion here. I do want a small little bit of a taper here, and it looks like I'm getting one. So, from here I'm just going to whip finish and throw the bobbin in a bobbin cradle. So before I work on the quill body here, I'm just going to take some super glue, uh, but at the lightest of dabs here which will actually help that be a little bit more durable um, when you're out there fishing doesn't hurt as well um, as you're tying and then I'm going to go ahead and turn I'm going to attach my uh, tur my turkey quill here to my hackle pliers and hold that straight up use our rotary that's why I put my thread on the bobbin cradle there I want to make sure I get that first wrap right around the back end. And then we're just going to slowly work our way up the body of the fly here. And hopefully you'll be able to see that this is generating a really nice pronounced kind of a ridge. Um, that will be a really nice ribbing on the pattern. Just continue this up to where we're going to want to tie it off. Which right about there is going to be fine for me. I'm going to take my bobbin off of the cradle, move the cradle out of the way. So this is where you want to keep tension on your quill or it'll come undone. Super glue may help hold it in place, but I do not want to let off the tension. And if you put too much tension, you're going to break it off too. So this is that delicate dance that we play sometimes when we're tying with some fragile material. So I've got a couple of thread wraps over the top of it and then a few more. I can take this out of my hackle plier at this point and we can come on in with our scissors and cut off the excess of that quill. For the wings on the fly I'm going to turn to some fluorofiber. Um, it, just a kind of a, a clear um, pearl color. I've cut off a little bunch of it um, and we're going to secure this to the top of our hook shank. Up here, not right exactly behind the eye, but um, just a, maybe an eye length or two behind the eye. I'm going to secure that with a thread wrap. I'm going to take another thread wrap, doing a figure eight, coming up over the other side. and get it in place. And I'll take a wrap or two around the hook just to make sure that I'm now on the hook. And you can see by doing that figure eight, um, we've got those wings kind of splayed out on either side. Um, from here, I'm going to actually do a few more of those figure eight wraps. So I'm just gonna go ahead and move back closer to that material. My thread. And I'll just uh, kind of go back and forth a little bit. Taking a few of those figure eight wraps. Now I'll have that secured about where I want it to be. So 
we're going to have something that's looking, you know, something kind of like that. I'm um, going to bring my thread backwards a little bit. Trying not to catch those fibers. For the dubbing on the fly, I'm just going to use some super fine uh, rusty brown. Everything is staying within the parameters of rust. This being a rusty spinner. Um, love the super fine because it will go on really tightly onto my thread, which is what I'm looking for it to do. I'm going to take a few of those wraps here behind those wings that we just put in, building up a little bit of a thorax, not a lot. Um, after I've taken a couple of wraps behind it, I'm actually going to do a couple of those figure eights um, over those wings with the dubbed material, the dubbed thread. And what that's going to do is it's going to kind of cover up those other thread wraps. From there, I'm going to just go ahead and take a few more wraps here, right around the eye of the hook. And maybe actually take another um, go back around the back. I want this thorax to be a little bit beefier, so I'm going to take another thread wrap or two behind those wings. And then I'll not figure eighting necessarily, but I'm going to now bring that back up to the front again. Just like that. So we've got a nice thorax um, going on here. Uh, we've got our wings all splayed out. Don't want to crowd the eye of the hook too much. I'm going to take a couple of thread wraps. With those thread wraps, I'm just going to reach over for my whip finisher. And we'll just put a you know a few turn whip finish on this. We want these whip finish wraps to start moving backwards. Um, that helps build sort of a tapered head. Um, but it also keeps you from crowding the eye of the hook because you are going to want to put some tippet material through the eye of that hook um, when you fish with this. And if you cover it up with thread, you're going to have a hard time getting it on the end of your line. Uh, with that, I'm just going to go ahead and we'll detach with the cutting tool. And from there, I'm going to come in, I'm going to cut these to length. And the length that I usually like these wings, I'll just take the whole, make sure I have the whole bunch in my hand. Um, I'm going to pull them back to about the length of the body, right where the quill um, starts. I'll make that cut. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side, making sure I've got all of those fibers in my hand, pulling them backwards and make a cut right where the end of our body is. So at this juncture we should be looking about like that. Um, the last step that I will I'll do with this particular pattern, because those tails have a tendency to want to move all over the place, I'll usually try to get you know a, a small dab of of varnish right just on top of them, not a lot, but just enough that will absorb in and that'll help keep those tails um, from going out of place. And I'll take an, a little bit more varnish and just put a few, um, just put a little bit of it on the thread wraps here on the front. Like that. And I'll let it dry. Um, but with that, there you have the rusty spinner. A uh, wonderful pattern. Um, tie this up when when there's a hatch going off, especially in the early evening hours. Um, you're going to want to have these in your box. Um, you will you'll you'll kill them and uh, give it a shot.